Hello, this is Tim West. I am looking at a chart of silver and it is from tradingview.com and that is where I publish my charts and projections and trading views about all kinds of different markets and utilize a technology that I have uh, put together called Time at Mode. And I wanted to walk you through it today just to show you, you know, what to do, how to do it, and give you an overview. For some, it might sound complicated. For others, it might sound simple. Um, either way, just hang in there. Um, I've explained it to you know, thousands of people over the last uh, 20 years plus since uh, I started doing this by hand in uh, 1988. And using computers certainly makes it a lot easier to, to do this, but um, there's a, some pretty basic concepts that I developed and really they all came from just simply plotting charts by hand and you can really see the patterns um, unfold when you do that. So <clears throat> this great computer program, uh, TradingView, has uh, some really nice powerful functions here and what what we're going to do is analyze how the market has been declining here in silver and try to understand both from a time and price perspective where we think um, you know, it's going to bottom and you know, that's, that's the main goal of this technique. Um, so on another video what I could do is analyze uh, the rally and see if that was um, at all predictable, useful uh, with this method, but for now I'll just walk through trying to find the bottom. So I'm going to scroll through so that you're just looking at the, uh, the highest high there and what you do just to walk you through it this way is, um, is you want to look at every price bar as it unfolds and um, I'm just going to walk you through it right here. So you know this is a downtrend once there's five bars without a new high. So that's true at this point. One, two, three, four, five. So at the end of this bar here, the market's already fallen quite dramatically, um, but that's where there are no new highs for five periods. Period being the red and green uh, boxes. And those are basically monthly uh, ranges, so actual calendar months. The black bars are weekly bars, so they're sort of in addition to um, the, the price bars. So, anyway, so I, why don't I draw on here um, uh, the concept of finding the mode. So, you start from this high here and you start counting. And, and to my eye, I can kind of see this pretty quickly. Uh, but right here in these first number of bars, that's where one, two, three, four, five, so there's six bars actually right here. Uh, using from the highest, you know, two, three. Four. So that's, anyways, there's six bars at this particular price. And note that the market um, comes back to it over here and just sort of bumps against it and then continues on down. Um, so you can kind of call this a seven, but uh, one, let's see what else. Once once we touch here, let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now actually there are seven definitively down at this uh, level here. See if this high uh, picks up on all of those. And I, I don't want to grab the other um, features here, so see the problems that I have using all these tools. Um, so again, we're just walking forward. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we here. So now at this point, this becomes the new mode. One, three, six, and there's actually eight here. So, and then notice how the market uh, comes back up to bump this again in the future. So um, looks like silver is operating very nicely on this time frame, given how it's you know 
forms a mode, moves away, comes back to test it. Forms a mode, moves away, comes back to test it. It's going to, you know, now form a mode of 12, it looks like. Because I've hand drawn on here, there's 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So right where I have this 12 labeled, there are indeed 12 months um, there. So that is the most time at one price. So once 12 happens, you then get this move away from it, which confirms that you know the market's distributed at this time, at this price, and now it's going to go down for 12. But um, in order to check your work, you can look for, make sure there isn't another level where there's more time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now there's actually thirteen right here. So that presents you know, an issue because now we have a new signal once the market spending is an entire time period away from the mode, then it triggers a new signal. So I may be involving too many um, projections going on here, but I want to, to walk you through it as best I can, and then uh, see if I can do better at another time. Um, on the next uh, bar down, you know, we get, here's this green box, is below 13, so that triggers 13 to be true. So now we're in a downtrend with 13 months of distribution in place. So notice what happens. Um, you know, the market starts dropping. Um, we need to check our work and find, you know, we're making sure we've got the level with the most amount of bars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So in reality, this red bar here makes this one, this level, 14 months. So that is, uh, you know, a new signal. And here's the first month below this 14. So this marks month one. Month two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I put a little green box here to designate when. Uh, 14 months um, uh, times out, basically. I'll delete one of those. On the repeat function. So, anyways, that is where you look for uh, 14. Let's next look for um, um, the, the price. What is the price projection you would make? Um, using this. So what we do with projecting price is we look at all the, the price action of the bars that are touching the most frequent bar. So basically we want to start right here. So this is the high of the bar that's touching this mode here. We go all the way over to here and then down. And now we've encompassed the entire range. Now, this is important. You can either just grab this box and slide it down, or you can make a clone of it. So let's just make a clone of it. And you have to grab the edge, which is a new feature. And then you can position it in place. And you do it right from the end the most frequent uh, most frequent price here which looks like it's 31.55 or so in silver so it looks like this is explaining very nicely um, you know where the silver market bottomed now granted it bottomed at a later date than the idealized distribution time um, so I mean, that's not perfect, but at least the price seems to be working nicely. So um, that would be, you know, a place where you would look for a bottom. Um, you would have looked for a bottom over here in time and say, 
okay, the market didn't drop as much as it should have, you really would have gotten pretty bullish right in, in this um, zone right here. Because look what happens. Let me just delete this box. You know, time expires. The market didn't drop down to here. We expected it to drop. It takes out a previous month's high. The range expands going up. And therefore, you know, you get pretty pretty bullish. So, you know, maybe, maybe really bullish, you know, if it's above this line that I'm drawing. Now, granted, you would have gotten concerned if it's if silver breaks under this level and it would break under a previous month's low here, it breaks under a previous month's low here, it breaks under all these lows here. So really that's just an unfortunate trade. It didn't it didn't pan out. I mean not every uh, signal is gonna work. Just try and understand what is happening in the market. And understand is it under distribution or accumulation. So it was, uh, you know, accumulating because it was not dropping. It was turning, and then it failed. So then, interestingly enough, it, it there is a new uh, 12 period, 12 month time zone here, and um, and that you could use to make new projections. But it's not greater than the 14 back here, so that makes it sort of a higher risk uh, setup because you always want to. The highest amount of time is the is the price that's controlling uh, the market. So this one's you know not as important as this one, but uh, either way, let's look at it. Here's a nice move out of 12. This whole range is out of 12, you know, out of the out of the mode, and we can measure the price projection, and we go from the highest price which is right there, down to the lowest price, which oddly enough is on in the same, uh, at the beginning there of this chart. So there's the range that this market's in. Let me clone this. Oops, I gotta grab right on the edge. And bring it down to the red line. And again, this is where the market should have dropped to. In, in 12 periods. We are nowhere near 12 periods right now. Here's, here's month one, month two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're in month nine. So uh, month 12 would be, uh, let's see, nine, 10, 11, it's July, August is 12. Let's put a little box over here for 12. I'll do it real quick. Anyways, there's month 12. It doesn't want me to doesn't want me to put it over there. <clears throat> so anyways, that that little spot is uh, you know where it potentially could go, but um, it also could be turning from here. Remember the, the rule of five. So you have one, two, three, four, five. At the end of this month, without five months with a new low, um, it could be uh, a sign that the trend is turning, and or you know failing basically. I would I would put a, a new trend starting from this low at the end of the month, basically. Yeah, that would mean there's a trend in place that's to the upside. There's a trend in place still to the downside. And that's what makes the market a triangle, which it kind of looks like, just like uh, over here, just to throw some other labels on things. I mean, a lot of people are you know, calling this a triangle, but uh, just using the simple terminology of there's a downtrend and an uptrend going on at the same time, you know, sort of forces you into the logic of a triangle as well. So that's what I like about time at road. Just the simple definition of trend allows you to understand uh, you know, the condition of the market. So um, what I'm looking at here is you do want to see the market be above the. Um, 
you want to see the market 